Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. Paired releases the Anafi UKR and the Chuck 3. We have DJI leaks and a bunch of updates. And then lastly, a Louisiana law that would allow law enforcement to shoot down drones. All right, let's get to it. And first up, we have Paired releasing the Anafi UKR and the Chuck 3. Now, the UKR is a compact UAS that is designed for GPS denied environment. You can probably guess from the UKR name what it's going to be used for. Uh, it's also designed for indoor use. Uh, it weighs just over two pounds and it features a 35x uh, camera zoom with a clear bosom uh, thermal imager. It looks like we don't have all the information on the thermal sensor size, but uh, we're guessing that it is 640 by 520. 12 based on the uh, other thing that they released at the same time. Uh, the UKR has 38 minutes of flight time using the standard battery and then 50 minutes of flight time using the XLR battery. It has a 16,000 foot ceiling, which is actually quite impressive, and then a maximum speed of 38 uh, miles per hour and an IP53 rating with an operating temperature range between minus 33 Fahrenheit to 122 Fahrenheit, which is also uh, pretty impressive. Now, we had the opportunity to see this drone earlier this year at a conference. Uh, it actually felt really good, kind of very lightweight, but looked like it was pretty uh, solidly built. They also released the Chuck 3, which is an all-in-one autopilot system. Not something that we're uh, typically seeing reported you know, from, from different manufacturers, but the Chuck 3 is designed to uh, be dropped inside of other airframes, and it includes the autopilot, navigation, the imaging, and then a jam-resistant communication system. It comes just under a pound, and it includes a three-axis gimbal, a spool-proof multi-band radio, a visual positioning system, and it's also compatible with Parrot's night vision module. The camera system has a 35x zoom camera and then the FLIR Boson 640 by 512 thermal sensor. Uh, this is why we think that the UKR has the same kind of data because this is uh, this autopilot is kind of designed to go into different types of aircraft, but it wasn't explicitly said on the uh, release that we saw. Pretty cool new stuff from uh, Parrot. It's good to see that they're still making new models and we're hoping that maybe eventually they'll get back into the consumer world as well. Next up, quite a few DJI pieces in the news. We have leaks of the Mini 5 Pro. Jasper Ellens on Drone Excel has some information on the rumored DJI Mini 5 Pro. Uh, including a release date, potentially. Uh, starting off, it looks like the leaked images are showing a mini drone with prop cages and uh, that would be very similar to the flip. Now, the rumor says that it might be category one, but I'm, if I have to guess, I'm gonna say it probably won't be, uh, more than likely because of the remote ID requirement. Uh, DJI has not historically made uh, sub 250 gram drones with remote ID natively in the United States at the very least. Now the images are also showing LiDAR-based obstacle avoidance, which is what we've seen on the most recent uh, models from DJI. Now other than the leaked images, the other information that we have is that it potentially would be released on August 7th, but uh, we'll have to see. Next up, the DJI Flight Hub is now available to be run from private servers, and this is kind of a big deal. It's a, it's a big step for folks that uh, need to meet certain data security requirements. This would ensure that remote operations never have to hit servers that are outside of the organizations that set them up. Now, the offline system includes support for 2D mapping without having internet access, 4G transmission from re for remote deployment, and then compatibility with the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise, the Matrice 4, Matrice 30, 300, 350, and then all of the DJI docks. And then the final story about DJI is not a great one. Unfortunately, it looks like nearly all DJI and DJI resellers for consumer drones appear to be out of stock. Uh, this includes DJI website, their official website, BNH, Adorama, and even Amazon. Uh, it's unclear at this time what this means for DJI Care or the warranty claims, uh, but we'll definitely keep you updated when we hear more about this. And in our last story, Louisiana has authorized state and local law enforcement to intercept and disable drones that posed a credible threat to public safety. This allows officers to use both kinetic and non-kinetic method to neutralize UAS near schools, public events, and critical infrastructures. Interestingly, this law is federally preempted by USC 18 USC 32, which prohibits the destruction of a civil aircraft. Now, another law also that may come into play here is the FCC ban on radio frequency jamming in case they were using these kind of events. All in all, I think it's unlikely for this law to remain on the books, but uh, we'll see what happens.
And then on Post Flight this week, we're gonna be covering all of these stories in depth along with an additional story, which is a Baltimore man who pleaded guilty to violating national defense airspace. And if you're not familiar, Post Flight is our weekly show where we dive deeper into the news update items with more opinionated takes. And then also it's available in the premium community. You can go to pilotinstitute.com slash community to find out more. All right, that's all we have for you this week. Join us for the live Q&A on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Pacific. We'll see you then. Chuck three, <laughs> which kind of sounds like the Johnny five. Do you guys remember Short Circuit? No, no, no. no? Okay. We were told not to take pictures have... after after we took. I took a significant amount of pictures of it. We will probably never see it. Sorry to be the <laughs> bearer of bad news. It wouldn't have come to this if it was done in Louisiana. And then they just would have shot it down. It wouldn't be an issue.